The topic of this video will be the radical halogenation of alkanes. The halogenation of alkanes is a substitution reaction where we replace a hydrogen on the alkane with a halogen. Here, RH is the general formula for an alkane. X2 is one of the halogens. Rx is the alkyl halide product. And HX is the hydrogen halide byproduct. Remember that alkanes are not very reactive and therefore require the input of energy in the form of heat or light. It is called radical halogenation because it involves the formation of compounds that have an unpaired electron. Typically, we indicate a radical species by drawing the atom or the molecule with a single electron. For example, let's look at a chlorine radical. The complete Lewis structure of a chlorine radical would have seven electrons but we don't indicate the paired electrons because it's the single unpaired electron that is responsible for the radical's chemistry. Radicals are electron deficient because they don't have a complete octet. They are very reactive. Because they're so reactive, they don't last very long. Species that are generated during a reaction and exist for some finite but short amount of time are called reactive intermediates. The term reactive intermediate is often shortened just to intermediate, but they mean the same thing. In radical halogenation reactions, the, radi the reactive intermediate is a radical species. And there are actually several, several reactive intermediates involved in the mechanism of radical halogenation. Halogenation is a free radical chain reaction. So let's look at that mechanism. It's called a free radical chain reaction because it involves the formation of reactive intermediates that are radicals, and it's called a chain reaction because once the reaction starts, it propagates itself. So let's look at the steps involved in a free radical chain reaction. The first step is called initiation. The initiation starts the reaction by generating the reactive intermediate, in this case, a radical. The second step is called propagation. In the propagation step or steps, the reactive intermediate reacts with another molecule to form a product and a second reactive intermediate. This second reactive intermediate allows the reaction to continue. The final step is called termination. The termination steps are any steps that destroy reactive intermediates, which ends the chain reaction. A chain reaction will continue until termination has destroyed all of the reactive intermediates available. Now let's look at an example of this reaction. We will start with the simplest possible alkane, methane. Methane can be chlorinated in a chlorination radical reaction by combining methane with chlorine in the presence of energy in the form of light or heat. Light is usually abbreviated with H nu, and heat is abbreviated with the symbol delta. Now remember that this is a substitution reaction where we're replacing a hydrogen on the alkane with a halogen, in this case, chlorine. That substitution reaction can occur once to give us CH3Cl, chloromethane. It can occur twice to give us dichloromethane. It can occur three times to give us chloroform. Or it can occur four times and replace all four hydrogens with chlorines, giving us carbon tetrachloride. The other product of the chlorination of methane will be HCl, hydrochloric acid. Notice that this is not a balanced reaction equation, but we're not going to take the time to balance it because doing so would be very complicated. What the overall equation tells us though is what reactants give us what products. Each of these products, these carbon containing products, is a substitution product. However, to simplify our discussion of the mechanism, we are going to consider only the formation of the first product, chloromethane. Let's look at the mechanism. Remember that the first step of our radical chain reaction is initiation. For this reaction, initiation involves the generation of chlorine radicals. One molecule of chlorine breaks homolytically to give us two chlorine radicals. Take a moment to calculate the formal charge of the chlorine radical. Pause the video if necessary. Now we're going to draw the mechanism of this step. And remember that a mechanism shows which bonds break and where the electrons go and which bonds form. And it does this using arrows. We've looked at mechanisms in the past. Remember that a double-headed arrow, such as this one, 
is used to show the movement of an electron pair. But in this case, the bond breaks homolytically, meaning that one electron from this bond goes to one chlorine atom, and the other electron from the bond goes to the other. We indicate the movement of a single electron with a single-headed arrow. So to show this bond breaking, we draw a single-headed arrow from the bond to the chlorine on the right, and we show the movement of the other electron in that bond to the chlorine on the left. We show that single bond breaking with one electron ending up on each chlorine, which is where our single unpaired electron in each of the chlorine radicals of the product of this step come from. The second step of a chain reaction is propagation. In radical halogenation, there are two propagation steps. In the first step, a chlorine radical abstracts a hydrogen atom from methane. Again, this will be a single electron process, so we'll be using single-headed arrows. And that chlorine radical abstracts a hydrogen atom to form a new bond to that hydrogen atom and a new radical. The hydrogen-carbon bond breaks homolytically. So the new bond is formed between the chlorine radical and the hydrogen. The hydrogen-carbon bond breaks homolytically, meaning that one of the electrons goes with the chlorine radical to form the new hydrogen-chlorine bond, and the other electron from that bond ends up on the carbon to create the new radical. The products of step one of propagation look like this. Our molecule of HCl and our new radical on the carbon now, which is called a methyl radical. The HCl is one of the products that we observed in the overall reaction, and the methyl radical continues on to propagation step two. Step two involves a process between the methyl radical and another molecule of chlorine. In this step, the carbon radical, the methyl radical, abstracts a chlorine atom from the chlorine molecule, breaking the chlorine-chlorine bond homolytically and forming a new bond between carbon and chlorine, and creates another chlorine radical uh, from the other electron in the chlorine-chlorine bond. So the products will look like this. We get a, pro a product of chloromethane, which is one of the products of the overall reaction, and another chlorine radical, which can start again in step one of propagation. You'll notice that each propagation step has a couple of things in common. The first is that we start with one radical in each case, either the chlorine radical or the methyl radical, and we end with a single radical, the methyl radical or the chlorine radical. So our net loss of radicals is zero. We don't gain any, we don't lose any. The other thing that these two steps have in common is that we produce products that are seen in the overall reaction. On the top in step one, HCl. On the bottom, we see the chloromethane uh, product. And it's this propagation step that makes this a chain reaction. It will continue because it keeps producing new radicals until one of two things happens. Either we run out of reactants, this means that we'll run out of either methane or chlorine, or it will stop when the radicals are consumed by some other reaction. Reac reactions that consume radicals are called termination steps. Possible termination steps include any reactions that result in a net loss of radicals. So some of these include the collision of two radicals together, such as this reaction, between a methyl radical and a chlorine radical to produce chloromethane, this possible termination step produces a molecule of product. But there are other possible termination steps that produce other byproducts, such as the collision of two chlorine radicals together to produce a molecule of chlorine, or the reaction of two methyl radicals to form ethane. Other possible termination steps include the collision of radicals with wall or a contaminant to form a byproduct that reduces the total number of radicals. This can occur with a methyl radical or a chlorine radical. What all of these possible termination steps have in common is that they decrease the number of free radicals. That's what a termination step does. And in this way, it helps to terminate the chain reaction, reducing the reactive intermediates and stopping the reaction. The termination step typically does not happen until the end of the reaction because the concentration of radicals is always very low. 
And so it's much more likely that a radical will contact another reactive molecule, such as methane, rather than another radical, until the end of the reaction when the concentration of reactants is very low. Then it becomes much more likely for a radical to encounter another radical, a wall, or the contaminant, ending the reaction.